Hello there. Welcome back to Jenny Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I'm working from another card sketch. So get comfy and let's get crafty. This is the My Favorite Things card sketch number 635. It's a very simple card sketch that could be as elaborate as you wanted it to be. I'm going to work with this Brutus Monroe playful plaid paper pad. I've selected the Honeybee Stamps um, Car Show stamp set. There are five cars, so I will be making five cards. And I'm using the Coordinating Your Classic Sentiment stamp set. I have paired five different patterns with Coordinating Cardstock. I've trimmed the pattern paper down to four by five and a quarter for now. And I've kept the little end strips to make the flag banners with. I will be stamping with Versamark ink and heat setting the images in white embossing powder instead of coloring today. So the first thing I'm going to do is score the card bases. And because I am using the um, card sketch, the way it is laid out, I'm going to do everything in um, every step all at one time. So I'm gonna do all of the scoring of the card bases at one time. Then I will do all of the stamping at one time. So in order to stamp these cards onto the cardstock, the first thing I'm doing is putting the cardstock in my Misty. I am angling that pattern paper onto the cardstock, and then I'm picking a card and car stamp, wow, and placing it onto my cardstock, and then sliding the cardstock back in the corner in case I need to stamp it twice. And I'm going to treat every piece of cardstock with my Rabbit Hole Designs anti-static powder tool in order to prevent the embossing powder from sticking to anything but the Versamark ink. Um, when I first started card making, I did not buy open line image stamps. I did not buy stamps that required coloring because they were um, overwhelming for me. Um, sorry, back to the card for a second. You saw me pause for a minute there and um, let the heat embossing powder set onto that ink before I shook it off. And that's just, um, I don't know if it's actually necessary, but I feel like, you know, 10 or 20 seconds just sitting there on the ink can't hurt. Anyways, back to what I was saying. I did not buy images that needed to be colored because I was overwhelmed by not only the coloring itself, but the coloring medium options, you know, watercolors, paints, pens, markers, all of the things, right? Pencils. Um, so I didn't buy this type of stamp because I felt like you had to color it in order to um, do justice to the beautiful artwork. It wasn't until after I, I actually took a Copic for card makers class on the um, online card classes website that I started coloring with Copic markers. And that has been like um, 10 years ago that I did that I think, or nine years ago, I can't remember exactly. And so now I have tons of stamp sets in my collection that are these line drawings that are meant for coloring. However, you don't have to color them. Heat embossing these images on colored cardstock is a fabulous way to use these um, open line images. And I love it. Um, this was a really simple way to make a bunch of cards at one time. I know I've said this before, and if you've you know watched any of my videos, I have a huge family and I send birthday cards out to, I send more birthday cards than I do Christmas cards. So, this is a really quick way for me to get a whole bunch of cards in my stash at the same time so that when I need one, I can pull out one that I feel will um, fit the person I'm sending it to the best. So we are continuing to stamp all of these cars at the same time and then add the embossing powder. I did find in my stash a little jar of Tailored Expressions White Fine Detail Embossing Powder. And that's what I'm using today instead of that tub of embossing powder that I think is past its best use date. And it is turning out beautifully. Um, you can, for a little while, set your stamped and embossing powder images off to the side and then heat set them 
in a couple minutes. As long as one, you don't put anything on top of it to disturb that embossing powder, or two, you don't leave it so long that the ink and the embossing powder have dried up and then the ink, the embossing powder just blows off the cardstock when you go to heat set it. So I am stamping all five cards at one time. I'm setting them um, just ahead of my workspace there. I have a little um, laptop stand I'm set, or a paper tray stand thing and I'm setting them in there while I stamp and get the powder on the next image. And then I'm going to super zoom through the heat setting of all of the cars. Um, I did have my heat tool um, heating up for about 30 seconds to a minute before I started with the paper. And then it just, the, the more you do, the hotter, the longer it's been on, the faster they go. Once I have them all heat embossed and they have cooled, they have cooled, I'm taking this Swiffer dusting cloth and wiping off the excess anti-static powder from my embossing tool. Um, next step is to fold and burnish all of the, the crease lines on my cards because they're going to be a little bit warped. So I'm going to um, put them underneath some large stamp blocks while I move on to the next part of the stamping that will allow like I'm putting something heavy on top of them so they can flatten back out. And that's just because that heat tool does warp the cardstock. Even though I let it heat up, it did warp it a little bit. So I'm going to set these off the side of my desk. And now we're going to work on the sentiments. So I have a piece of, this is a very lightweight cardstock. I think it's like a 65 pound cardstock that I'm using because it was on my desk. And I am going to create five different sent sentiment or sentiment clusters to use on the cards. I'm stamping the sentiments in VersaClair Nocturne Black Ink and heat embossing them with clear embossing powder. And originally I had them on my sticky mat for my Misty, but um, I didn't want to have to peel it off every time. So I just kind of, you know, I, I <laughs> just took the card stuck in the corner of my Misty. The reason I pulled out the um, sticky mat was because my mist, the black foam pad in my Misty, I wiped it off with a wet wipe and it was a little damp and I didn't want the water to get in the card stock. So yeah, I just walked it over. <laughs> it's got two sides. So I have stamped, um, let's see, I did cruising into your birthday, happy retirement, um, and I'm, he I am putting the embossing powder on and heat setting in between on my sentiments in case I bump them. That's the only reason I'm doing them one at a time this time, because if I bump them trying to stack these sentiments, I'll have to start over. The next one I'm doing is you make my heart race. I thought that could be a fun anniversary card or just because card for my husband or, you know, anybody's significant other that likes cars. I don't know. I'm also going to use the two stamp sets that say you're a classic and you're vintage. Um, I do not have the coordinating dies for these, but I'm pretty sure that Honeybee Stamps does have coordinating dies for this sentiment set, if it is still available. I will also say that this might not be, this stamp set might be no longer available because I'm using shopping my stash. All right, I did not make you watch me fussy cut those sentiments out. Originally, I was going to use my um, brother scan and cut, but it would not pick up on some of those smaller sentiment clusters. So I just went ahead and fussy cut them out. And now it's time to assemble the cards. So I'm adding the pattern paper in at an angle that like was shown in the sketch. I'm flipping it over and using a pencil to kind of outline the top of where the cardstock would go. And I'm putting the adhesive on the back of the pattern paper. And then I'm going to just line that card panel up with the pencil lines. And I'm going to zoom through the rest of those. Um, I tried a couple of different ways of doing this. Um, and I feel like this is just for me, the best way. There's no guessing. There's no, um, like I got, adhesive on all of the pieces of the pattern paper that needed to be um, adhered down. And it's a really easy, it's three little snips with scissors when we're done. I did try to use my mini guillotine trimmer, 
but I still struggle with getting right up to the edge of the paper with the guillotine trimmer and this one okay I put the wrong paper on the wrong card base <laughs> this card base was supposed to have the blue or this card pattern paper was supposed to have the blue card base and this one was supposed to have the aqua card base so yeah I did have to fix that but <laughs> anyway I do struggle still with my um, guillotine trimmer getting right up to the very edge so I just pulled out my long hand or my long um, Tim Holtz scissors and it's literally three cuts one two three and we've cut all or trimmed all of that extra pattern paper off. And um, I will not lie, part of me wanted to trim that down and keep all those pieces. I did not. I cut all five cards down, pulled my trash can over and put it all in the garbage. You should be so proud of me because I didn't keep all the little pieces. Okay, now it's time to put the sentiments on the um, cards and the little flags that were on the bottom of the Card sketch, that's the phrase, card sketch. I've lost my mind. Anyways, I'm using a coordinating piece of pattern paper to make the flag. And I'm using um, my Tombow glue and my reverse tweezers to put the sentiments up on that um, pattern paper, kind of how the the card sketch, the, the number of the card sketch, that did not sound like English, card sketch, there we go, where the, the number of it was, I kind of put my sentiment there. And then I'm just going to use a pair of scissors to trim off the excess um, strip. And then we're going to fast forward and do the rest of them the same. Now this Brutus Monroe pattern paper, it kind of has a photo kind of finish on it. And my trimmer blade needs to be replaced. So the edges of my flags were a little bit um, less than clean. So if you see me fidgeting, fidgeting off camera is because I have a, a nail file, one of those square nail files that I am clean, like right there, cleaning up the edges with. It's actually one I got from Stampin' Up! a zillion years ago, but it really is basically a nail file. <laughs> and I'm just using that to clean up the edges. On this card, and only this card, I put the flag on the opposite side because of the orientation of the card. The tires were a little, I had a little more space to work with. There is another car, the one on the blue card base. I probably could have done the same thing with that one, but I didn't. You know, so whatever. We're just going to continue to add all of the sentiments to the card bases and the flags to the card bases, and we're going to trim them off. And this is like, okay, so this is edited down to about a 14-minute video. Um, I think all told, including a huge chunk of time where I was trying to get my scan and cut to work, and where I was fussy cutting the sentiments, I think I still only had like 55 or 54 minutes of footage. So really in one hour, you could mass produce five cards, well, way, way more than five cards, but at least five cards and have them for your stash and easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? All right, now that we have everything assembled, we're gonna go back through and add the copy paper to the insides of the card because I like, I feel like that finishes it off. So here we're gonna take a less fast paced look at all of the cards and you can see that they are fabulous. Okay, I think they're fabulous. You can think whatever you want, but I think they're fabulous. <laughs> I love how they turned out. They're all a little bit different in the sentiments and then, you know, the cards are different, but really, it's a fabulous way of, of defeating that lack of inspiration, especially if masculine cards are difficult for you. Sometimes I get stuck on what a masculine card should be. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I've added a couple of other videos here I think you might like. I've also added that subscribe button. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you did. Leave me a comment down below, give me a thumbs up, let YouTube know you like the video, and I hope you have a fabulous day.